Right? And then the deltoid basically is going to be here. So there's three different parts of the deltoid, right? So if the anterior deltoid acts by itself, what well, is that going to do? Well, the whole thing together would do this. The anterior could do internal rotation or also what's called horizontal adduction. Okay. Or little adduction. What about just this too? Yeah, it would do some of this too, yeah. Flexion. So yeah, action, the anterior part flexion and medial rotation, middle parts abduction or the whole thing acting together, and then posterior would be extension or lateral rotation or horizontal extension. There's a couple other motions in the shoulder that are also mentioned. I mean, the classic motions is you have the sagittal plane is what? Flexion. Flexion, extension, right? Then you have abduction, adduction, and then internal rotation and external rotation. Okay. Then there's other motions that you can t call this also forward elevation. Okay. And then and this would be extension. And then you talk about horizontal adduction and then horizontal abduction or horizontal extension. Extension in a horizontal plane, flexion in a horizontal plane. So sometimes this motion will come up. So that's just the way to describe it. Well, speaking of range of motion, there it is. Okay. So the shoulder has a lot of range, but obviously your body stops it coming in here. So that's why this thing's drawn with that extra part in there. So you can come around here. I did bring it today, but usually I bring a, a wooden sword that you use for shoulder range of motion. Maybe next week. Can I finish racket? What's that? I have a tennis racket. Uh, well, it's not as fun as this. Okay. There's a real sword in the clinic. We can borrow it. <laughs> Will they let us? Yeah, no. Don't ask, don't tell. Okay. <laughs> but basically, you know, if you're putting the sword into a sheet that's, that's internal rotation, then it is flexible. Because when we talk about measuring range of motion, uh, people get confused a lot of times and they forget, you know, that this is, because when you measure rotation, you're not going to measure it this way. When you use goniometer and econometer, it's such a measure in this plane here where someone's laying on their, on their back on a table. And this, you got to remember, this is external rotation, this is internal rotation. So normal uh, flexion is going to be 160 to 180 because basically you get you can get to this position from a couple different ways, right? You can do just regular straight flexion or you can do abduction. And then you know, extension is going to be the same muscles like you mentioned: posterior deltoid, teres minor, latissimus, and. I mean, latissimus is going to start out extending it, but once you get to a certain point, then you've gone past latissimus, and then it's going to start resisting it. Okay. And then in the frontal plane, what's, what are these motions? Yeah. Adduction, going towards, abduction, going away. But technically, though, once you get to here, are you going away from the body anymore, or are you going towards the body? Yeah, but it's still called... It. AB So then that's going to be the deltoid, and then other muscles that are going to impose it, some of the muscles of the rotator cuff, the lower ones, subscapularis and infraspinatus, and also teres minor. And so again, if you get in here, if flexion is 180, then it would make sense that abduction is going to be the same too, because you're getting in the same place. And then adduction is going to be the pecs and the lats, teres major. So when you measure adduction, you have to bring it forward a little bit like this. You measure it across like that. So I, I remember a degree 
very tight from here. I was was I have in there? Um, on the last slide, it said that extension of normal is 50 to 60 to 1575. Yeah. Well, that's why it's because we're not really going to get wrapped up into saying yeah. exactly what's normal because different sources say different things. Okay. And different patients are going to have what's normal for one person is going to be may not be normal for the other. Okay, let's see. That's about 60, so 75 we're talking about there. And then in the transverse plane, then you're going to have the internal and external rotation. So then external rotation is going to be infraspinatus, the posterior deltoid, and then teres minor. And then, like I mentioned before, the latissimus and the teres major are going to do internal rotation, and also subscapularis. And then you have horizontal adduction and horizontal abduction. Right. So horizontal adduction is going to be pec major and the anterior deltoid, and then horizontal adduction or abduction is going to be posterior deltoid, teres major, minor, and infraspinatus. So let's see, then it goes into conditions. What else do Anybody help me? Okay. All right, so does anybody have impingement syndrome at this project? Today. We have rotator cuff. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Are you sick? Rotator. So the here what we're talking about. This is the subacromial joint. So it's named subacromial mean, chromial meaning under the chromium or suprahumeral meaning above the humerus. So it's that space right here. Okay, so what muscle is coming right here that goes through there? Supraspinatus. And what also comes off of the top of the glenoid fossa here that goes across here? Biceps. Long head and biceps. Okay. And then also there's a subacromial bursa. Okay. So when you bring the arm up like that, they get impinged. So what do we call that? Impingement syndrome. Okay. So when we talk about the shoulder, there's kind of an overlap or transition between, you talk about shoulder conditions that are basically contractile tissue conditions, okay? You're going to have rotator cuff tendons, you're going to have biceps tendons, spinatus, all that stuff. And then some of the soft, I mean, the inert tissue that can get impinged under there is going to be the, the bursa, okay? So impingement syndrome is when you're having problems where the arm is actually up in that position, okay? But in that position, you can also damage the rotator cuff, and I don't want to say too much about that because I'll let you guys talk about that first. So pinterest is going to be entrapment of the tendon of either the supraspinatus or long head of the biceps under the acromion. And then it can happen because they, they talk about different, uh, I forget how many, but they talk about like a type 1 acromion or type 2, but basically it has different acromions are going to be shaped a little bit differently. One may have more bony prominence here so that it's going to restrict that opening. Okay? Or you can have, uh, if somebody had an AC step injury, maybe they have bone spurs or excess calcium or bone buildup in that space that's going to narrow it. And then, pain in the beginning, if, you, if it's only irritated when it's up in that position, but if it starts to degenerate and progress, then they're going to have pain in other positions. So they may, if they start to damage that tissue, then it's going to hurt in other positions. But in the beginning, when it's first happening, maybe when they first do it, if they threw too much one day, play baseball a lot or something, then they're going to say, it hurts when I do this. Or if they're swimming a lot or something, then they say, it's going to hurt when I'm in this position. But when I bring it back down, it doesn't hurt. But if you keep having the same problem over and over again, it gets irritated, then it might bother them more frequently. It'll start out as an ache, they will have difficulty sleeping. Again, it's going to be pain with shoulder flexion and abduction. Okay. 